meeting, which is going to be more about uh, discussing certain work items that are also developed within the certain or the different working groups at DIF, as well as uh, opening up the floor for discussions related to the work items. We can also circle back to previous um, topics. One thing, this is still not an IPR protected call, so please really be careful on wording and what topics you bring uh, you bring up. We will um, pro like we will uh, police the call, but uh, just for everyone, uh, be self aware. And with that, um, we will also share the Slido link. I would like to invite Marcus and Sam from the Identifiers and Discovery Group to talk a little bit about the group and uh, and the work that is being carried out and what they have been doing in the last couple of months and years since the group started. Marcus, are you ready to present? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you can you hear me and can you can you see it? Your voice is a little weak and we can't see it. Okay, is it the voice better is, now? The voice is a lot better, yes. Okay, and can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I'd uh, be happy to uh, tell you a little bit about the Identifier and Discovery Working Group. I'm Marcus Sabatello together with uh, Sam Smith, co-chair of this group. The uh, Identifier and Discovery Working Group was was one of the original groups in DIFF that was already there when, when DIFF started uh, because identifiers are, are everywhere, right? They're the, the, the basis for everything else. We have identifiers in, in verifiable credentials. We have them in DIT auth. We have them in DIT com. We have them in, in many other things. With Without identifiers, we cannot refer to things. Uh, we cannot uh, create connections, uh, relationships. We cannot have uh, data sharing or, or messaging if we don't have identifiers at the at the, at the heart of an architecture. And of course we want the identifiers to be decentralized and that's why this, this working group was, was active from the beginning. Uh, this is a, a screenshot of the page, uh, of the working group page on the DIFF website. Uh, we have, we also have a meeting page. Uh, we recently switched to uh, weekly meetings from previously bi-weekly meetings because there's so many interesting topics all the time. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview first of the, the charter, what the, what the working group charter says, and then we'll look at the uh, concrete work, work items that we have in the group. So the charter says we can work on specification test suites related to uh, creation, derivation, resolution management, use of all forms of decentralized identifiers including but not limited to did so in theory we can work on, on other things other decentralized identifiers that are, are not compliant that are different from w3c deeds but we're doing that come up it's just a theoretical work related between domain names relationship between the identifier layer of a stack and other building blocks such as the secure uh, data store or, or other other things. Working on discovery protocols, uh, uh, recently a very interesting establishment and maintenance of control authority. That's what uh, CARE is about. We'll, we'll get to that in in a, in a second. And we're we're having quite a quite a lot of discussion on security and trust in identifier infrastructure. How can we how can we trust uh, identifiers and resolution of identifiers and and so on, and we, we also have in, in the charter that we can work on on concrete did methods. So what are, here's a list of uh, the most important current uh, topics and, and work items. So recently, the uh, working group received uh, carry as a, as a contribution key event receipt infrastructure from uh, by, by Sam Smith, which uh, had uh, a lot of attention at IRW and is, I think is generally a very exciting uh, building block or in initiative in, in this space. Uh, there, are, there are multiple implementations now being developed in, in the DIFF 
GitHub organization. Also, uh, did peer uh, is, is also very, very central or maybe not central, very decentral, right? <laughs> um, yeah, building block that's uh, really important in, in did auth and did com and, and agents and so on there, uh, there, there is a commitment uh, to move that into diff and also into this working group it it hasn't actually happened yet but it, it looks like it's it's going to uh, to be moved into this working group then we have the uh, the universal resolver that's also i think a pretty well known project in the in the community that was one of the earliest projects uh, earliest concrete implementation projects in in diff uh, we already heard a lot about interoperability on uh, in this uh, in this virtual face-to-face -face meeting and when when diff was was founded uh, i think the ecosystem that we saw was one where each company had their own wallet and their own sdks and their own did method right and everybody uh, thought uh, my did method is going to be the best and is going to win and everybody's going to use uh, my did method because because my did method has the best uh, governance framework or my did method is the most decentralized or my did method has the best built in semantic web or smart contract or whatever other features but uh, pretty soon it became obvious that there will be many 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 did methods even even too many perhaps and so uh, uh, we thought as an as a basic building block uh, for on the did layer we needed uh, universal resolution, uh, a tool that uh, can resolve multiple DID methods using a, a common interface. We've recently deployed an, an instance of this uh, code base on a, on a new domain name, uh, resolver.identity foundation. So that's now something like an official uh, diff hosted instance, uh, actually hosted on uh, an infrastructure provided by, uh, by IBM. So we're very grateful for that. Then uh, other work items, the well-known DIT configuration, that's, uh, that's an actually uh, more or less well, completed spec, right? So that's something that you could, you could say that DIF has released now. Uh, specification for uh, linking domain names to DITs in a, in a way that can be bidirectionally proven. Then uh, the next one, secret recovery has uh, it's a relatively new topic that uh, started a few weeks ago with a uh, with the blog post and a contribution by uh, by microsoft and since then uh, we've also seen other contributions such as the uh, horcrux protocol that's for uh, biometric uh, recovery by viridium and finally we've been uh, doing some work on on did parameters uh, uh in you know in alignment with the with the did core specification at w3c and as i said uh, a few a few minutes ago also the the topic of how can you trust identifiers how can you trust resolution that uh, that uh, comes up from time to time and is a it's a frequent uh, topic that we that we also discuss on on the calls and uh with that i'll stop here and i see if maybe sam uh Wanted, it, I wanted to add anything. I don't. I don't have anything to add unless somebody has questions about uh, Terry or or some of the work there. Okay. So should we? Yeah. Should we see if there are um, any in, any questions? No questions. Well, I invite everyone to our uh, Slack channel and the uh, weekly weekly meetings. We, we can we can do uh, questions at the end after all the groups have presented. Should we maybe go to side tree and then come back to questions for all of the above? It's fine, fine with sure. me, Palash. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, sure. Um, 
Um, okay, there is a question, but I can't decrypt it. Um, hey, let's let's return to question at the end, and then let's jump to Sightry. Daniel, would you do that? Yeah, sure. So, should I share kind of like what do you think? Marcus, can you stop sharing the screen? Thanks. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about, we kicked this group off, maybe, I don't know, six months ago, something like that. I forget exactly, maybe we can chime in, but, but, um, some number of months ago. And the goal was really to get Sightree to be a formalized specification. Um, what it is, uh, for people who may not be familiar, is a blockchain slash ledger agnostic, um, well, protocol, I guess I would call it, uh, for being able to do like truly decentralized DIDs are as robustly decentralized as you probably could. And, you know, it, it affords you some, some things that, you know, are unique to it. Um, it does implement a lot of the same um, security conventions that carry, uh, for instance, describes, um, you know, protect the keys and have a lineage that starts from the inception event of generating a DID. And beforehand, you know, Microsoft had, you know, I had written this paper up a long, long time ago and it sat on the shelf for a bit and then we started implementing against the concepts and it didn't have something formal. This is a formal spec here. Um, we uh, believe Dan, that this was, yeah. I, yep, cannot, yep, yep. Yeah, I can't see your screen yet. It says, oh, is this just me or it says, is it up as well? It, can it say says your screen either. There's a bit of a lag. Okay. I know, okay. now, there you go. Now, now we can see. Oh, whoops, okay. okay. Well, so, so essentially, we started the group so that we could, you know, really put some meat on the bones and get some formalization around the spec itself, and um, and obviously the implementations that were being done with it. So this this is reflective, uh, we believe, as a group of a beta, you know, beta version of the spec. Um, the hope is that the reference implementation as it stands reflects the spec one to one. I'm sure there's things here and there over the next couple of months that we're going to iron out where maybe we just find there's a rata or something like that. Um, but the goal is to get the spec to V1 uh, over the summer and to publish it as a you know, diff recommend, recommended spec for anyone who might wanna create a DID method that has these properties and conventions that it includes. Um, and you know, work to, to foster DID methods based on it within this group. Um, the group would be you know, composed currently of um, Ion and Element and then Troy and, and the other folks have a, um, a fabric based uh, implementation, I believe. I, I'm not familiar with the name exactly, um, but those. Go ahead. It's uh, it's called uh, Trust Block. It's uh, implement Trust Trust Block. Okay. Um, so so there's a few implementations, and you know everyone is kind of working to stand those up and do their best to build an ecosystem around those methods to support them. So that's the goal of of the group, and I'll turn it over to Ori for any additional um, input. Uh, yeah, so um, I'll just restate, you know, a side tree is a, a um, standard protocol for developing decentralized identifier methods, and it's protected under uh, the diff IPR regime. Um, ION is Microsoft's uh, decentralized identifier method built on IPFS and Bitcoin, um, which is also hosted at diff and open source Apache 2 license and protected by, by diff. Uh, Element is um, the... Ethereum and IPFS variant that Transmute and Consensus have contributed, and that's also hosted at DIFF uh, currently and um, you know, protected by the DIFF IPR regime. Um, and uh, I think there are also a couple other uh, DIFF members that may be working on side tree implementations um, that are based on non, not you know, Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, or Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so if any of those people want to announce themselves, I'll, I'll let them. But uh, otherwise, um, I think that's a good summary of what, what SciTree is. Um, my ask as one of the co-editors is please go read the spec and open issues. Uh, if you find a spelling mistake, if you think something's confusing, um, we're really looking for collaboration and contribution. We want this to be readable uh, specification and standard. And no matter what your background, um, if you have a chance to read and leave a comment in an issue, um, that'd be very helpful to us. Thanks.
Are there any questions to Saitri? Just before we go forward quickly. Uh, Ori, hi. This is Andreas. Uh, just a just a quick quick question. I actually just checked out the the, the latest version of the of the anchor uh, um, of the anchor contract. I, I think that um, that needs a little a uh, little bit of work, especially if, if you want to run it on on um, uh, on a on uh, on public 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 mainnet. Um, so I'm happy to to have now more time to re-engage so I'll, i'm happy to 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 uh um contribute to that um yeah so move, first, to first that thing would be to join the side tree working group and uh, attend the working group calls and um just to be super clear about element status it's currently on the test net because we haven't released uh side tree spec v1 officially so and also the current version of element which runs on ropston is based on the previous side tree spec v0 implementation right. just, just to be clear no I, un, um understood uh but uh very much welcome um anyone who can join the side tree working group to, to please join it uh and contribute um there and we'll uh, certainly do again i'm sorry i will certainly do that again i was it was i i, I have been not engaged for 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 about a year so happy to to be able to 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 re-engage again. Awesome, thank you. I think someone asked questions before Daniel joined uh, in the very beginning of the call when we had our coffee time. Um, I think it was around ION and a few other things. Is there something you, like now Daniel's on the call, any questions you guys want to bring up? <clears throat> um, I would actually pick a question from the uh, chat. Um, is, what are the status on ION and ELEMENT? Um, I rephrased it a little bit. Um, just do like have a more, as they are both hosted under uh, the side tree working yeah. group as well. Yeah, I mean, I, so I can talk about the ION stuff. Um, you know, I, the reality is, you know, we, we've, we contribute a significant amount of the code to ION, obviously. Um, and that's something that, you know, we want more and more contributors over time. Um, decision was made that you know, given the state of the side tree spec and the reference mutation, it was it was good to go in terms of a beta um, on on Bitcoin. So right now it had been on testnet Bitcoin, and it was you know getting working its way up to being more and more stable. Um, so you know the group agreed. We we pushed it over um, to mainnet because we wanted some like real you know serious traffic um, using the mainnet of the the blockchain. So um, that happened uh, this last week. I don't you probably saw the you know post we did on it um and we just want to bang on that thing until it's hardened basically and at that point uh in coordination with the side tree spec itself uh, we won't do it before that um, as soon as we believe that side tree spec as a working group is at a state where it's v1 um, then we will feel comfortable about maybe calling ion a v1 um, but but really it's you know dependent on on side tree as a as a base protocol Yep, uh, I'd say the same thing about Element. You know, we're um, obviously the working group is really focused on getting to spec v1 release, um, and our uh, revised implementation of Element following spec v1, which contained a numerous breaking changes, um, is is going to ship. You know, sometime after we've gotten spec v1 out and stabilized and committed to no no more breaking changes, um, which is why it's so important that you all go and review the spec and open issues. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, and then just to refer to the question that Ruven brought back from the coffee at the very beginning, Daniel, that comes to your organization. It's regarding that CoinList article that also mentions the release of ION, but uh, maybe mm -hmm. from a slightly different angle. Uh, Oh yeah. Question yeah. that yeah. could maybe comment on very shortly. We don't want to go in very deeply to that. Yeah, I won't. You know what I will say is um, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding in the community about um, Ion. Ion actually has nothing to do with credentials itself. Um, it's actually and SciTree in general. They're they're very low level DPKI protocols, and all they ever really do is have IDs and you know change the state of your keys and your 
endpoints. So they themselves have nothing to do with credentials at all. Um, I, I was remiss to read that article. I actually had a conversation with the the author of the article, uh, Lee, afterward, and you know, it just it commingled that whole sort of mess about credentials being used for that specific thing people don't like in the medical sphere or whatever with ion, which really they're very separate and orthogonal. Um, so I'll just say that, you know, our work in that working group doesn't have anything to do with that stuff. Um, so you can rest assured if all you wanted was IDs and keys and endpoints, that's all we're focused on in the SciTree working group. Thank you, Daniel. Um, are there any questions on, uh, for SciTree now? We can always come back later. I think there are none, or I can't hear or see any hands. Um, Juan, did you see a question on Slido? There's not a question, but kind of like the discussion happened a little bit about carry. There might be a chance that uh, Sam, you might want to use a few minutes to give an update and talk a bit about briefly carry, so people might better understand what it is. Uh, sure. Um, uh, so those who are not familiar with CARI, CARI stands for Key Event Receipt Infrastructure. Um, and the basic idea of CARI is that um, we build a security model based on a root of trust that it, that self-certifying identifiers and CARI generalizes the concept of self-certifying identifiers to include things like self-certifying, self-addressing identifiers and, and various formats. But the key idea is that the data necessary to establish an issue and identifier is, is, uh, is part of the identifier so that it's self-certifying, which means that the root of trust with the identifier is solely the entropy of the controller that collects the entropy to create the identifier through a set of one-way functions. And this means that the root of the primary root of trust is not dependent on any infrastructure. It's not dependent on a blockchain. That's not dependent on anything else. It's completely and totally decentralized in the most extreme sense of the word of a decentralized identifier. Given that you start with this root of trust, then you can designate uh, secondary uh, roots of trust, such as the ledger or or in carry, it's a key event log, uh, append only key event log, um, to, to do things like rotate identifiers or other operations. But what you have then is a, a um, what we, the term we use in carry is N verifiable, an N verifiable uh, proof of the control authority for the identifier at any point in time. And that means that you do not have to trust any intervening infrastructure or administrative infrastructure and this removes the vast majority of security exploits on, on, uh, on uh, secure identifier overlays. So, so Kerry is, is attempting to uh, remove um, the, the, the security exploits that happen when, when you depend on infrastructure, which the vast majority of identifiers that are administrative issued suffer from. And so with, with, with a self-certified identifier, primary root of trust, uh, you get beyond that. But the, the, the net effect is, is, that, is that by making infrastructure a secondary root of trust, carry allows your identifiers to be truly portable. So that, so that means that, that you could, you, with, if you use carry, you can port your identifiers between ledgers, for example, if you wanted to use a ledger as a, a data store for your, for your, um, uh, for your rotation history, but you don't have to use a ledger, but, but you could. And so, so it, it, it enables the freedom of, of, uh, of having identifiers that are totally controlled by, by the creator of the identifier. And that's, and that was the main purpose. The two main purposes were uh, portability and, and, and better security. Um, and, and, and did methods could, can use like in the case of like, uh, as Daniel mentioned, for SciTree, you can use the same similar concepts to build a, a, a root of trust that's in a self-certified identifier. Um, or or uh, one of the things that Carrie's working on is a, is a universal DID method that would would work 
as a spanning layer for 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 identifiers in in the internet. And so, without going into much more detail, uh, which would take too much time, uh, that that's some of the the basis for carry. Um, so if there's more questions, I'd be happy to. Um, answer we had some slider questions about carry. I'll start there and then. Okay. Um, one was, how do you see carry relating to or integrating with other methods that use ledgers for anchoring? Maybe you already answered it, but. Well, no, it's but it's a good question. So 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 with carry a ledger. Is it becomes a secondary root of trust, which means that you could have a carry did method that would use a ledger, but the but what you're putting on the ledger are carry uh, key events, um, and so you're using the ledger as an immutable data store, not as not as a primary root of trust. In other words, you can move that immutable data store to any other ledger, and and it's still verifiable as as the as the key event history for for that identifier. So if if your application benefits from using say Ethereum and you have some other things going on, then 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 integrating carry with an Ethereum method would wouldn't be a problem. Um, be, um, but it also means that the identifiers could, could be you know the, the the key event history could be put in other places and it's still valid in any any copy anywhere is is still valid and so we have the term ambient verifiability which means you just you you know that you have copies of the key event histories that that, that are verifiable and sam someone's asking would each organization operating an element node deploy Sorry, deploy the element contract themselves. Element? Do you mean like? I'm that's, not sure that's what. A question for element. Uh, the side tree. Um, oh, that's uh, that sorry. Oh, question. sorry. Yeah. Uh, and sorry. the answer is is no. Uh, the way that that will be registered is similar to the way that the did ETHR contract is registered for consensus. So it points to a specific smart contract address for each network. Um, and that's what's associated to the uh, did method prefix. However, um, it's totally possible that you might use a different smart contract and uh, have a different did method associated with it. Sorry okay. to jump to an answer, but. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, actually, the there are some more questions here about side trees specifically um, one was how distinct are the two implementations or how much code do element and ion share i can comment on that um, they don't share any code right now <laughs> um, so uh, the hope is that in the future they will be able to share uh, more code um, but the implementation right now that we have uh, is the reference implementation uh, suffers from some modularity concerns um, that we're we're still working to address. Um, so I can tell you that our element implementation for Spec V1 is going to be much closer to sharing uh, more code with the um, Ion implementation. Um, but the current implementation that's checked into Diff uh, is for for Element is entirely built in JavaScript. Um, and the uh, ion implementation in diff is built in TypeScript and uses the uh, side tree uh, module as a reference implementation in its uh, build process. Yeah, so I'll chime in on that. So, so basically, there's some things I think that some of the working group members want to change about, like for like instance, monorepo, you know, moving to monorepo or structural type stuff um, in the reference project, um, stuff that we can certainly do. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I don't think anyone's really opposed to it at all. Um, we just, we need to make those changes. Um, nothing that, that means you can't use it today. Um, like if you wanted to, I don't know, if you wanted to run it on some, if you wanted to run it on some UTXO based chain that wasn't Bitcoin, you could probably take like the Bitcoin module that we wrote and I don't know, like, you know, say it was Litecoin or something, I don't know, and do that pretty easily because it translates. Um, or you could take the core and you know use it against any other type of ledger. It's, it's not shouldn't be too too crazy to do. But yeah, you're you're right. Um, or we're we're going to work towards making it even 
even easier to compose the components and to choose your own adventure. Um, and, th and there was another uh, composition, choose your own adventure question about how side tree and or ion could work with carry. Yeah, so, um, okay, so, so this, is, this is the thing, right? SciTree basically implements a lot of conventions of carry. In fact, we kind of added, uh, we just added like one last one just to kind of like cap off some of the pieces like, and Sam knows this, like we added like the um, pre-commitment hashes of public keys and stuff. Like it, it, it doesn't do it like in the, it doesn't describe it the same way, like maybe the carry paper does, right? It doesn't use the same terms, um, but the, the outcomes are the same. It's like if you took, if you took carry and then implemented against a blockchain or a ledger, it would kind of look a lot like side tree, basically. You know what I mean? It would look you, not not exactly, but Sam, am I messing this up? No, 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 no. A lot of the concepts are the same. If 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 you start with self-certifying identifiers and keep a, a log of the transformations, how wherever you keep the log, then you're essentially implementing the the basic idea of carry and and the fact that you added the pre-commit hashes means that you're doing a form of the pre-rotation, which is the primary mechanism in carry for doing secure rotations that are, that, you know, and, and you get post post quantum security when you do it that way. So, so, um, and, and carry was designed to not require uh, a blockchain like, like Bitcoin uh, as, as the ledger, you can just do it on an append only event, event log database. But if you're going to do it against uh, a ledger, then SciTree is a is a is one is one way that you you would you would use uh, a block, you know, Bitcoin as your as your ledger um, for for storing the events as opposed to using the ledger transactions themselves as the primary root of trust. You're just using the ledger as a as an immutable data store. But you have to you have to manage the interface to the ledger, and and so you're really building an oracle. So SciTree is like an oracle. That, that implements an I identity system. And I don't know if I just totally butchered that. No, yeah, no, actually that's, you, you bring up something that I will note that's a little different. So side tree methods, unless you like did something different than the spec describes, they do feature one thing that is a little bit, well, not exactly unique. I think there's other methods that do this too. Um, but one unique property that, that not all methods have is that you can know of all IDs that are registered in the system. Now, people get scared when you say this, like, oh, it has a directory of all IDs, but it doesn't like know anything about the identities of the people or anything. It just knows like the big, ugly character string, like an ID, right? Like imagine you had an email that had 32 bytes of nonsense as your address. Um, you could just know the email address. It doesn't mean knowing who owns it or anything like that. You just know the keys behind it and the address. So SideTree does have this capability where you could, any method that's done, you know, according to the spec, you could essentially iterate every ID in the system. Not all DID methods have that. Some like have very private, like you can't actually query for an ID unless you already knew it out of band or something like that. Um, we, I like the idea that you can have all the IDs and iterate them because in the future, if personal data stores to IDs, um, you might be able to go iterate the IDs in the space, sort of like how people iterate um, you know, public web pages, for instance, or, or web servers like um, crawlers do. And my, my belief is that in the future, you'll see people have personal data stores that expose certain uh, public information they want you to know about, like maybe their resume or their picture or something, you know, basic stuff that they're okay with the world seeing that they authorize. And you could crawl for that. And then you could like form up sort of this, this uh, world of, of crawlable data that was intended for the public to see, like tweets or, you know, things like that. So it has these advantages and that's one feature. And that's why when Sam says an Oracle, it's very accurate. It has that Oracle capability. One other note is um, there is also a did method called did peer, which is not um, a public ledger based did method. And it also relies on um, patch based updates and storing an event log. Uh, and it's similarly related to carry in that has some structural similarities um, from the inception event through various different updates, but it, unlike a side tree based did methods, um, you can't know, there's no Oracle to, to call to ask for all of the dids that exist. Yeah. And, and uh, did peer actually, uh, you know, Daniel's not on the call, but one of the, uh, 
I, I think that a path forward for did peer would be would be to normalize it in in the carry and carry for like a future iteration of it so so there there might be some some um convergence there uh just a, a summary is that carry because of because it generalizes the idea of self-certifying identifiers uh, uh carry you can create an identifier in carry that looks like a a a, a, a um a did key where it's just an ephemeral identifier with with just just the public key you know derivation or you can do something like did peer which is a private uh pairwise identifier or you can do something that uh is public and persistent and has uh, uh you know immutable rotation history um, um like other other more sophisticated identifiers they're they're all they're all special cases of the generalization that that Kerry provides. So it's a so so it's a first principles based approach to decentralized identifiers, and 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 a lot of them a lot of the ideas are are not original to Kerry. They're just they're just um, have been put in one place to try to to try to generalize uh, identifiers, uh, self certifying identifiers. If it's not self certifying, then Carry, carry is very opinionated and said you shouldn't you shouldn't ever use a non self certified identifier because you expose yourself to a whole family of security exploits and or uh, non portability uh, issues that 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 you know we feel is not um, not appropriate for truly self sovereign truly decentralized identifiers. Okay, I think I think we've uh, exhausted the Q 